I have an idea. Let's create war. What a positive slogan to start a video with. But that happens to be the slogan of the Iron Golems and the subject matter of our video today. We're taking another complete process look at the wonderful world of Warcry. Before we dive severed head first into the Iron Golems, let's talk about the colors involved in this recipe. I'll be using from Vallejo, neutral gray, dark blue pale, kind of an oxymoron there, but I like the color. Deck tan, German camo, dark green, black gray, silver, gunmetal, brass, and from the contrast paint range, Gullum and Flesh, Black Templar, and then we're taking these boys to Powder Town with some faded blue, dark earth, yellow earth, and rust orange. Oh baby, oh baby. Armor, rust, chains, lethal spikes. This is a list of my favorite things. And this is also a description of the standard wardrobe worn by the Iron Golems. So let's paint it up without any further ado. Get on with the lesson. In the beginning, the model is primed with black spray paint. Why would you do that if you're going to paint it gray anyways? Well, I prepped everything all together at once when I got this set. I didn't know what color the factions would be or how it would all turn out. So I just thought it would be best uh, practice to just start everything off black. So let's do the exciting part and turn it gray. Excellent. Let's let that dry and get to work. All right, got our recipe on the palette. I'm going to take from Vallejo Neutral Gray. First step, let's just dry brush up these rocks on the base. Being the messiest part of the process, I will do it first. So as I'm working, I'm covering my tracks. I don't care if I get a little bit of gray up on his uh, legs or whatever. Or hey, look, maybe I could remove a piece of the basing material. Patch that up. Keep that secret between you and I. I'm finding with uh, this plaster that I used to base them, it's just crushed up plaster. It's still a little a brittle. I, I could have um, soaked more super glue into the, the porous plaster material, but live and learn. So. We'll get that dry brushed up. Following that, I want to bang out these metallics. I'll take my gunmetal gray from Vallejo, cover all of the chain mail, all of the spikes, these little hammers, every single piece of trim to just sum up that very long list that I was about to recite. Mainly all the metals will be painted up with this silver except for the collar around the neck. I'll be using brass to color that in. Shazam! All metallics base coated. Saved you a little free time by just skipping ahead. Base coating. Fascinating stuff, I know. Now we'll get some German camo dark green. Paint in the handle. That green will be our one little spot color. Switch over to the deck tan from Vallejo. And it might seem a little abrupt to be highlighting this, this very dark gray with this, this bright deck tan, but as you'll see in a future step, it's all going to get toned down. So we want to aim a little higher than normal because we're going to use a layer of contrast paint. I'll just go over. I think this is possibly the most time consuming step of the whole process. It's, it's up to you how meticulous you want to be with your edge highlights. But if you want to be efficient, just pay the most attention to the upward facing angles. You don't need to underline everything, just highlight it. If 
but I want to make sure that I'm picking out all these little... That was a little wide. All these little scratches and dents that have been sculpted onto the model because the wash is going to sit inside of those crevices nicely. Don't want to leave any of those details out. And optional, there's some areas that I just want to pay a little more attention to. The chest, the collar area. I'm gonna outline this little brass collar that we have going on. Just provides kind of a nice outline. We'll leave a slightly a dark black, deep gray crevice showing. Very lightly. You can see I'm, I'm pressing so lightly that a lot of the time I will make a brush stroke and not produce a mark. It's because I'm holding the brush at a certain distance. The harder you press, the wider that line will become. So just very gently floating the brush across the surface. doesn't produce the most saturated results so sometimes you may have to go back in for another pass get it right the second time but this is up to you it's a never-ending kaleidoscope of pain you can make something as complex or as simple as you would like myself I'm aiming for that that nice middle ground get that nice C plus average for my tabletop quality. You could add more superficial scratches and dents, as always, painting a little extra texture that isn't included on the sculpt. That's fine with me. And yeah, we'll just keep going. We'll pull these highlights up. Also, the handle. That'll get a highlight of the Vallejo deck tan as well. Right along these edges. All right. I am going to continue ripping it up on this base coat. Well, I guess we're onto the highlights. Let me rephrase that. I will keep ripping it up on these highlights and we will be back in a flash. Slapdash highlights in place. Looking good, looking good. Now, take a little Black Templar from the Contrast Paint range. This is why we have painted everything in the certain order that we've painted it in. So I'm thinning it down, adding a good amount of water to it. Probably 60% water at this point. Um, and we're just going to bring this over every surface that isn't skin. Armor plates, the brass, the silver, leave his base alone, the handle of his weapon, everything's going to get a lick of that contrast. Just make sure that you spread it around a little bit goes a long way. In my mind I always look at contrast paints the same way that I look at ink. Packs a lot of punch with a very small amount, but the contrast paints have a certain flow to them that the ink doesn't have, so pretty convenient. You have to grab a little more contrast paint, so your mixture can vary a little bit. But look what my brush is saying. Ignore the words that I'm talking and look at what I'm painting. You can see the amount paint, the desired look, 
you have a lot of work time, you can spread it around, you can take this mixture away from some areas where it may be pooled up too heavily. Try to work against along that wet edge. I'm not gonna paint this half of his shoulder and then move to another part of the body. You wanna make sure that the contrast paint remains connected so the surface tension is even as it dries. And I can be a little sloppy with this. I haven't painted the skin because I knew I would be throwing this paint around. You can see I'm getting it up on the back of his calves. No worries. It's all about the proper order of operation. And this being a little less neat with this stage and kind of flipping the order around allows me to save some time. Getting really exciting now with all these varying shades of gray and deep silver. I know, how will this ever become the colorful mess that we see in the future? Let's start to spice things up a little bit. I'll take my Vallejo deck tan, mix it 50-50 with dark blue pale, also from Vallejo. And this will be the foundation for the flesh tone. Want to be careful around these little uh, subdermal implants that he has. Very cool look. I'm thinking about getting some uh, myself, so thank you for supporting this Patreon so I can attach spikes to my face and shoulders. But yeah, we'll have to be a little careful because we did these steps out of order, but I do think this is the more time effective way to do this. So I might be lazy and try to do it all with a brush that may be too large for the situation. Within elbow's reach, I have a smaller brush. I'm reminding myself of that as well as you, viewer. Don't be afraid to switch to a smaller brush. <laughs> Even though I want to use the size six for everything and almost do all the time. Get a little finer this this time around. Ooh la la, so pale, untanned. But let's add a little bit of color to this Cretan. Got some Gulliman flesh from the contrast paint range. I won't be thinning it down. I'm just dragging it across every square inch of this muscled beast. Make sure that I spread this healthy dose out evenly. You can see it allows that pale flesh to kind of show through, but adds a little color to his shadows. making him look just lively enough. This guy spends a lot of time in a subterranean forge, hiding from the sun, beating upon his anvil. We create war, after all. All contrasted out, I'll let that sit for a moment. Let's grab from our little pile of silver that just appeared, because I forgot to lay it down in the beginning. But I'll just quickly kind of overbrush bright silver highlight and all the metallic areas. Most importantly, the little chainmail gown. Let's highlight the upper area. I don't need to drag these highlights all the way down. You can see I'm just kind of painting it up on his hips and buttock. And we'll get the bangles. Just kind of catch the sides of those. This does not have to be well done. I can't stress that enough. Everything is going to be covered in weathering powder, so don't worry. Just provide a little bit of contrast, a little bit of information on the surface. 
just kind of whip through it because we're going to be making a mess anyways. Just want some sort of a foundation to work on top of. Now let's highlight that flesh. You can see a little area on his side where I, I don't know, for some reason I scraped away some of the base coat. It may have to do with something, uh, the nature of the contrast paint, but no worries, I'm going to cover it up anyways. So adding to that base coat for the flesh tone, bring more Vallejo deck tan into the mixture. Probably just go pure deck tan in some areas. But we'll start highlighting, riding along the line, all the upward facing angles on these muscles. And basically, I want his skin to look like a maze of scars. More, more scar than skin, you know? So think of it as kind of cross hatching. I know, like, the upward areas of these muscles will be catching more light and revealed from that light will be a horrendous pattern of scars. No going back from that, but I think in the world of Warcry, being heavily scarred is an attractive look. Maybe just one scar down the side of your face could be disfiguring, but 100 scars, well, now you're looking kind of exotic. Now you're interesting. And this is also a way that I can corral. So obviously the contrast paint has a way of sinking into the crevices and creating a blend in either direction. So I'm sharpening some of the angles that may have been lost in the murk. And he does have some scars sculpted onto the figure. You can see this, this abdomen area right here, it kind of fades Everything is kind of equally fading in from, from both directions, but just catching the upper part of his love handle here. Corral the contrast paint into place. Just leave that one blended part visible. about his abdomen. A day without training and gaining more scars is a day that is wasted. All right, I'll finish this up and we'll jump back. We create war. All right, now finally the fun part and the reason that I've been referring to every other stage of this painting as the base coat. I've produced three perfect portions of powder on my palette off to the side. I have yellow earth, dark earth, and rust orange from Secret Weapon Miniatures. Let's add a little bit of water to that yellow earth. Let's create a washy consistency. Find the right level of focus. Whoop, whoop. We'll just let this sit and settle into all of the crevices, finally igniting this model with a little bit of color, pulling away from all that gray. Slay the gray. And it might look intense at first, but keep in mind this is going to dry and revert back to its original powdery tone. So get that in place. We'll also take from this dark earth, similar style. It's creating a very kind of thin powder wash. Sure. And we'll start laying down the foundation for some rust. Go random. Just, I guess, think of the crevices, my friend. Moisture is going to accumulate in the crevices and be more likely to cause the oxidization. I realize now that I forgot the weathering powder for his brass collar. We'll 
we'll get that laid out on the palette of doom in a moment. So I want to lay down this dark earth and let this fully dry before I bring the orange into play. Just for the sake of a little tonal variety, because they're so heavily rusted and so easy, why not add a few extra colors, make it look double cool, double your powder, double your fun. Okay, as everything is drying, we can already see it kind of turning back to its original tone. Got a little bit of faded blue from Secret Weapon. Just a little bit. And around the rivets, just tap that onto the brass. Maybe a little bit in the surrounding crevasse. A barely there wisp of powder. Let's let all of this dry and then we can work the orange in. Okay, it's had a moment to dry. Still down in the deep crevices of the base, still wet, still drying out, but you can see the original color kind of coming back to the light. But let's take a little bit of this rust orange, watering it down. And again, going a little random. Don't completely cover the previous layers of brown. Let a little bit of it show. Just kind of dabbing this into random cracks on the rivets, the base of the head of these little decorative hammers. Nice touch. A little gathering on the, the lip of his armor around his face mask. Get a tap up on that spiked hammer. Just follow the flow, man, wherever that rust leads you. You can leave some to kind of puddle up on the flat side and just see what happens. As it dries and settles down, you can see what the brown has turned into on the shoulder. That's also the reason why I didn't go crazy with, with the airbrush. I just started off with one color. Sure, I could have sprayed a gray highlight on but this is all about fast and effective. And the way I see it, these stages, that, that first stage ends up being so covered that it's not necessary when I'm trying to whip up a tabletop recipe. We're cutting corners today, my friends. So consider that corner severed. Okay, being a little more meticulous with the layering of this orange, I'll have to let that sit and dry and we might be looking at a completed guy. Well, look at that rusty laddie. Let's powder him down just a little bit more. And this time, I'm not going in the washy direction, taking a different dry brush, sweeping some of this powder off. And just kind of getting that, just rubbing it in place. Very few areas, just, just a couple spots to get that kind of like that that texture it basically kind of looks like chalk at the end of the day i should just grind up some sidewalk chalk and smear it on a model it's probably the same stuff all right obviously i like the rusted look it's it's easy to go a little overboard just assume a little more nonsense is being kicked up as he's making his way down the dusty trail. So these bangles, whatever, these discs that are hanging down, let's kind of have those fade into a more rusted version. Smooth things out. See uh, a couple more areas I wanna kind of tap and blend over the back of the model bit more towards the bottom of the chain mail. All right, don't get hung up on perfection. Just stick to the rule of cool. I like it. Consider this war created. 
The painting is not perfect, but the combined effect is very cool. I'm just happy to have my models brought to some uh, form of life and ready to hit the tabletop. But I want to talk about something else before we go. I used weathering powder on these models and I did not seal it with anything. Sometimes people hit it with a uh, some kind of weathering powder adhesive or uh, maybe a matte finish, some kind of clear coat. Um, to demonstrate why I did not do that, it is best seen than just dictated. So let's take a look at our friend. Our friend needs a name, so I'm going to use the chart from the back of the book. So for intents and purposes, our little demo model will be named Brock Banner. Brock Banner. Huh. These random name charts are kind of fun. But you can see in the footage, here he is, just sitting fancy free with that fresh powder. Now I'm going to hit him with two quick spritzes of Tester's Dull Coat. Time lapse, let's just fade that into the dried state. You can see here that the powder has been toned down. I made it wet and there really is no coming back from that. So my solution is to either dust on more powder or not clear coat the model, maybe clear coat it before applying the powder. I don't know, but I'm not worried. A lot of people seem to, I think you can invent imaginary situations when you're talking about sealing your models in, in clear coat. Um, these models will not be spending any time in the snow, in the rain, inside of my mouth. I'm not picking the model up by its legs and rubbing it. I'm grabbing it by the base or maybe the shoulders. I'm not finding any powder coming off on my fingers. If it does, I can lay more on top. I'm not going to stress about the powder. I just wanted to point that out because I'm not the powder master, but it does me some good at times. Sometimes a little powder can give you that creative edge you're looking for. So thank you for checking out this video. Please let me know any comments and concerns, any questions you might have down below. So thank you for checking out this video. So thank you for checking out this video. Feel free to ask any questions, log your comments and concerns down below. So thank you for checking out this video. I hope this tutorial informed and inspired you a little bit. Feel free to log any comments or concerns in the section below. And remember, when you walk out that door, this So thank you for tuning into this video. I hope that it served to motivate and inspire you a little bit. Please log any questions, concerns, and the... So thank you for checking out this video. I hope it served to inform and inspire you a little bit. Feel free to ask any questions or log any concerns in the comment section down below. So thank you for checking out this video. So thank you for checking out this video. I hope that it serves to inspire and... So thank you for checking out this video. I hope it helps serve to inspire and inform you. Feel free to ask any questions, log any concerns in the section below. I'm fine, thanks for asking. And remember, when you walk out there, things are always better when they're painted or powdered. So thank you for tuning into this video. I hope it serves to inspire and inform as well as motivate. I hope it does everything right and changes your life forever for the better. That's the highest hope I can have. Feel free to uh, log any questions, any comments in the comments section down below. So thank you for tuning into this video. I hope it serves to inform as well as inspire. I hope this video fixes every problem that your life has to offer. I really do. That's the, the highest hope I could have for this. But if it doesn't, I hope it makes you happy. And it <laughs> gives you a... And it... <laughs>
God damn it. So thank you for checking out this video. I hope it helps. So thank you for checking out this video. I hope it serves to inspire as well as inform you a little bit. So thank you for checking out. So thank you for checking out this video. I hope it serves to inspire as well as inform you a little bit on your future painting decisions. Feel free to ask any questions or concerns in the section below. Until next time, as the chromatic tempest spins all around you in this crazy world, remember, things are always better when they're painted, sometimes powdered. <laughs>